Welcome to the One Within All to Another Interverse podcast, and thanks for being with us. Today we've got an awesome chat with Abigail Pomeroy, flow artist extraordinaire and sound healing mm-hmm. specialist. Very excited to be digging into some of these things she's bringing to Backwoods at Mulberry Mountain this year and things that she is sharing with others on a consistent and regular basis on and off the festival scene. So if you're catching this, (laughs) you're noticing it's not live. We had to just post this video (laughs) because uh, for whatever reason, my internet decided I'm not allowed to do a live stream today. So whether, (laughs) whether it's the Facebook gods are angry with me or just plain bad timing, I don't know, but we adapt, we roll with the punches and we're just going to record this not live and post it for you guys and it'll be great. So anyway, thanks for bearing with us if you were waiting for that stream to start (laughs) and thank you for like waiting at the ready for the stream to start because that's really cool of you and welcome to the show, Abigail. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Let's go ahead and introduce you more thoroughly than how I did, if you don't mind doing that for us. (laughs) No, I don't mind it at all. Um, I'm currently living in Louisiana right now. This is where I was born. Um, I grew up here most of my life. We, I was a, a Air Force child. We moved to Virginia and then came back here and I finished out my school. Um, and, you know, shortly after high school, like anybody does, you start to try to figure things out, you know, figure life out and um, where you're supposed to go next. And um, for me and through a bunch of other experiences that aligned me to this point, I went to my first music festival. Um, I don't quite remember the year. I think it was either 2014 or 15. It was at a um, Oklahoma at this music festival called, um, let's see, what was it called? Mystic Sanctuary. It was the oh, first. Oh, shit, I was there. Only... You were? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that was my first festival, my, my very first experience. And, of course, when you go anywhere unknown or new, you have no idea what to expect. And I had no idea. And um, I was just completely blown away by the atmosphere, um, by the, the, the sense of freedom that I was being able to witness uh, through people moving, you know, as freely as they wanted to. And I had kind of struggled with, um, like anybody has, you know, we experience anxiety, depression, um, you know, insecurities, all these things as we're growing older, we try to figure ourselves out. These these things tend to come up. And um, through, through that first music festival experience, I was able to let go of a lot of medications and stuff that, I thought I needed to um, be happy and to be able to function. (laughs) Um, And once I realized that I didn't need any of that to to feel what I was chasing and that everything that I could ever possibly want was all within me. Um, And, you know, that, that never stops. That's always a continuing and growing idea and discovery. So, of course, through the music festival scene, I was then able to come in contact with yoga. Um, me and my best friend um, went to a pranayama class and um, we did an exercise that was specifically for um, helping alleviate anxiety. And after the session, my friend and I like looked at each other and we're like, wow, we've, we've really stumbled a, across something beautiful here. Um, we should become yoga teachers. <laughs> and, and without even, you know, knowing too much about it, I knew that if I really wanted to learn about this, that you should teach it. So I was like, all right, sign me up for teacher training. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea what this really is, but I really want to find out because something is pulling me towards this. And this is when I started to realize this was a a spiritual breakthrough and a spiritual experience. Um, I I do believe that this all uh, aligned in a divine pattern for me to find yoga. And through yoga, I was able to find sound healing. And um, 
all of those things came came together and then I found hula hooping um, which which has been a great hobby for me as well um, I, I find it to uh, correlate strongly with yoga and just the asana practice and the breathing everything that yoga has to offer I found in flow arts as well through hula hooping and um, yeah, the, the more you just follow through with uh, what you love and what you connect with, opportunities start to open. So through yoga, I started teaching. Now I'm doing sound healing, and now I get performances for hula hooping simply because I loved it, and I wanted to see what it could bring me. And it's, and it's completely brought me to a place that I was – never even dreaming of being in. And now I can offer that and share that with everybody in my life. And that's kind of where I am right now. I'm, uh, I'm currently doing my advanced yoga teacher training at Indra's Grace in Weatherford, Texas. That's about three and a half hours away from where I am in Shreveport, Louisiana. And um, it just keeps going. The, the experience never stops. And um, yeah. <laughs> Here I am about to do sound healing at Backwoods, which I'm super excited to share. I just started actually dabbling in um, creating the sounds myself through sound healing. Probably like um, a few a few months ago is uh, when I actually started to realize that I wanted this to be uh, a part of the journey as well. <laughs> I love that whole story. First of all, also... <laughs> Mystic Sanctuary was pretty fun. I had a blast at that. I was pretty new to festivals at that time. I'll just recap my own journey just to show how following yeah. your highest bliss actually will lead you to what you're here to be doing big time. Yeah. And just a, a, a quick little recap. I found I was a total square, like really in the deep society, mind control, no doubt. The blindfold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I uh, graduated college, uh, still hadn't really figured out myself at all in any capacity, went to my first music festival at Backwoods, sort of like the predecessor to Backwoods, I mean, uh, Wakarusa on Mulberry Mountain where Backwoods is. That was in 2013, uh, not long after starting up going to festivals. And it's that, that first festival is where I realized I wanted to do something that actually brought healing to the world because of the healing that yeah. I found there. Had no idea what that was going to be. Kind of thought it was going to revolve around like, I don't know, supplements or something like that. But explored those <laughs> things for myself quite a bit. What wound up happening, though, is going to more festivals. I unlocked my old self's love of creating art. When I was a kid, I loved to make art. And then at one point, the voice in my head told me I sucked at it and I better not do it anymore. And I'm not an artist. Mm -hmm. And so I got past that voice. Thank you festivals for helping me find that connection to my deep self again, started making art and then realized that creating anything at all and just following creativity is going to massively heal you. So then yeah. that led me to podcasting where I wanted to promote creativity and imagination and art as much as I could. And so it's just like that. There's, there's these steps, they don't seem linked, but then they all come together perfectly. Yeah. So I love your story because it mirrors yeah. a lot of our journeys and how seemingly disparate paths connect so perfectly. But when you say yeah. to go back to sound healing, when you say that you make the sounds yourself now, are you intoning things yourself like with your voice you mean um I have uh experimented with that uh just personally with myself um but as far as what I share with my students I have here some of the bowls that I use I have three different kinds of bowls um sadly I do not have my crystal bowls here with me but those will be in the sound healing at backwards um but some of the other ones I have the first ones that I started out with were these right here. They're made out of brass and they're um, they're machine made. So they're not uh, hand hammered, correct? We have like or, the same one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very similar. Um, these are machine made. Um, and uh, I believe with uh, these bowls, you are able to create the tone that you desire um, because these are machine made. Um, but I also have this set of bowls that I just got. They're hand hammered from Nepal and they're beautiful. And they, they sound like sounds that would come from heaven. Um, I'm very attracted to these bowls. They, they brought me a lot so much already. My students love them. 
Um, here, I'll kind of give you a little a uh, little tap real quick. Please. And it it carries for a very long time. It's what I really like about these. These are um, made out of bronze. Um, so the sound will carry, even though we don't hear it when the bowl is held far away. If you get really close, it, it goes on for about four minutes, three to four minutes. That's really amazing too, to experience that. I've got the same type of, uh, I don't have a brass bowl, but I have some metal bowls. I also have these, I have this right here. It's like, um, I guess like a chime, but what's cool yeah. is there's two. And when you hit both of them, they do this binaural type of frequency where there's like, I feel like having one crystal ball is great, but once you start overlapping them, that's when you start connecting left and right brain because your brain is having yeah. to like pay attention to two things at once. And anyway, the reason I ask about that, if you intone with your own voice is because at times in my life, when I've been at a really high vibration, for lack of a better word, very spiritually connected to higher self, then even the range of sounds that my voice can make seems to expand. And sometimes yeah. I'll even find myself like just randomly making a tone with my voice that I can hold for like four minutes, like the bulls. It's really yeah. weird. And I was, I was wondering if you know what I'm talking about. I do uh, know what you're talking about. Um, we we do do toning in yoga with the energetic system, uh, the chakras, and uh, there's specific uh, vowel sounds. Um, I, through my experiences, um, I too have found a lot of uh, space created, you know, in in this field and in my inner field from doing the toning, and I find it to be very uh, effective, and it's very it gets you into that state, you know, that yoga and sound healing, dancing, everything that it offers the, the toning is very directive, um, for me, um, when it comes to wanting to connect to that, uh, that really subtle space. I think the dancing part is a big thing we should get to as well. And we'll talk about flow arts after we've exhausted more of, on sound healing, but I was just thinking about last weekend when I was at a, a show here in my town of Springfield. I don't know if you've heard of Flintwick, but he's going to be one of the performing. Love Brady. <laughs> okay, yeah, Brady. Well, he threw down so hard <laughs> here in Springfield. I was dancing probably harder harder than ever. My levitation wand ran out of batteries, so I even went manual, which is rare. Usually I'm playing with the flow toy, but um, I danced so much that my entire back felt like it was released and without having to even work myself into it like I normally would I in the middle of the show I realized oh I can just completely do a perfect forward fold and touch my face to my knees whereas that would take yeah. me several minutes to get to that point of stretching and working and loosening it up so there's some yeah. definitely something to it when it comes to movement medicine yes and, and the and the sounds too that are uh, being produced um I find that bass, loud bass, really loosens me up as well uh, when you're dancing in some really loud bass. Um, but definitely um, just the movement of the body um, in any kind of way, of course, and we're getting lost uh, in this music. Uh, a lot of healing and lubrication is being added in all the spots that don't really receive it because we're, we're opening in any kind of way that we can because we're not focused on what we look like. So we're focused on the way that we feel when we do it. So there's, there's more of a chance for opening to, to occur in the body and in the mind for sure. But I love how you said you're able to just bend over and touch your toes so easily just from dancing. That's great. I actually took it too far though. <laughs> I was like, I was, I seriously was dancing for like three hours nonstop. And I got to the point where my knees were like my quads were locking up and I couldn't stand anymore and I had to go sit down. It was pretty funny, but I guess to continue the anecdote right before I left my house to go to the show, I grabbed this, this, uh, obsidian sphere I have. It's like a big orb and put it in my bag. I had no idea why I did it. Something just told me you're going to need this. And I was like, okay, I'm listening. So we'll just go with it. And when I went to sit down because of the 
the crazy leg kind of cramp I was getting from such ridiculous dancing for so long. <laughs> I mean, I was sweaty, but <laughs> I was dripping. It was ridiculous, but detoxing. <laughs> I grabbed that sphere and like kind of used it to massage the, those parts of my legs. And within like a minute, I was back at it. <laughs> So they nice. always listen to those weird intuitions, especially like, yeah. Hey, you need to bring this. You might be wrong, but you'll be glad if you were right. Yeah, de definitely. I feel that way all the time. That's why I have like a bunch of stuff in my car, uh, like blankets, coats, um, some colored pencils, like paper, like I have all these different things in my car. It's like being a, uh, like a Girl Scout of some sort, you know, like a scout just prepared for anything, you know, and I, I just think that's very wise to always listen to that first uh, instinctive thought that you have, you know, most of the time, like you said, you, you will regret when you don't do it. <laughs> It's funny. I, I'm the same way. I often take art supplies like every, anywhere I'm going to be for more than an hour and I'm not sure if I'm going to be completely entertained the whole time. I'm taking art supplies and half the time I never even get them out. But the time when They're I want it, I'm glad I had it. <laughs> And I'm sure you do that with your uh, flow props as well. I always have a hoop in my car ready to go like at any time. It's essential. Absolutely. But let's talk Let's jump back to sound healing. This is fun, but we are kind of tangentially talking about sound healing because I think Flintwick is, in particular, a pretty healing type of bass music, especially because his sounds are organic. Like, he's going around his backyard, squishing things together and cr crunching yeah. things and making those. They're not completely synthesizer sounds, and there's actually something to that as far as how your body responds to it. And anyway, what, what are some of, can you, can you describe some of the experiences that led you to want to actually be a practitioner with sound healing? How has it helped you? Yes. Um, um, I'm trying to remember when my first sound bath was, um, I believe like my first genuine sound bath with, um, hand hammered bowls, crystal bowls and gong, which I also have with me today. I would love to share some of that as well. Um, it was at the yoga studio that I teach at here in Shreveport or Shreveport Bossier. And I just, I remember going into it, you know, I kind of had an idea because I've played with sound bowls a little bit, you know, and I've heard gongs and stuff being used at music festivals, you know, those, those contraptions that they have where there's multiple gongs, you know, hanging around and people will sit in the center that was probably the only time that I've ever really heard a gong, but I've never, you know, been in the mind, uh, in the space to really receive what was being put out. I just, you know, I was hearing everything, not really feeling it. So when you're put in a space like a, like a yoga studio or just the person who is creating the sound provides the sacred space for you to completely let go and get comfortable, then that's when you can really start to receive uh, what's being offered. And, and I remember, um, uh, especially when she got to the crystal bowls, um, that uh, at the time I was having a pulled like muscle in my back. And I noticed through uh, this sound healing session that my pain was leaving my body uh, completely. Like the sound was able to, you know, silence uh, your your thought connection to, to that pain. And um, I found that to be extremely uh, relieving. And that just made me settle in more into the space. And then she started playing her gong and it, it was a complete outer body experience. It was just me, um, you know, for what I experienced, the divine God and my breathing, you know, I wasn't really completely attached to my physical body and, you know, who I was as a person. It was just, it just felt so, effortless and peaceful and I was like this is just so insane <laughs> I'm like wow uh I really want to know more about this and I actually went to her uh after and I asked her like you know how did you get certified what's going on here and she actually offers uh sound healing certifications both bowls and gong. So I completed a sound healing certification with her and that's how I have everything today. I ordered my bowls through her, the hand hammered ones. 
Um, she has a teacher that uh, has direct contact with uh, uh, the bowl creators in Nepal. So I was able to get them directly from like this really trusted source. And that feels really good when I play these. Uh, it, it makes my intention feel more wholesome, just knowing where they came from. Um, and uh, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> magic. Yeah, it's literal magic. Like you, it is so hard to put into words uh, the way that you feel when you're when you're experiencing all of these different vibrations um, that are coming from these things that it doesn't look like that these sounds would come from these objects, and they are. And you know, for me at first, that was that was very astonishing, and it it really grabbed me. I'm like, wow. <laughs> For this me, I think I experienced it the first time the same way as you with the the whole like spaceship at a music festival that is a, a tent with gongs and you sit in the middle and they blast you off. But what I never really considered before how much more effective it really is to be in a more enclosed space, less going on outside of the space right. and being able to get really comfortable and have an extended period of time to do it. So like my first experiences were at these festivals where they do bring these cool gongs and for just a small donation, you can get in there and get the sound bath. But for me, it was almost like just a novelty of, well, if I go in here, then whatever psychedelics I may or may not have taken are going to be <laughs> activated by the sound. And I'm going to close my eyes and see all these crazy colors and swooshiness that corresponds to what I'm hearing. And that was really cool, but it was like a novelty. I don't know yeah. that I connected it to healing so much because in general, I'm getting mad healing from being at a festival anyway. So I wasn't putting two and two together. But a couple of weeks ago, my grandmother passed away and it was actually the third grandparent of mine to have left their body in the last like nine months. So in general, I was feeling some heavy vibes and especially with that one, because I was more required as a caretaker through the last point of time. And, you know, that takes a lot of energy. I was sleep deprived and, and all this. And I went to a sound healing in Fayetteville that was put on by uh, Garrett Graham who is a great friend of mine. He's been on the podcast before. And actually the healing was done by Amy Dupriest, who is a wonderful healer herself. And unfortunately I can't remember who she was working with. She had another great sister that was helping out. And so this was like a two hour session and this was a whole different ball game. I went was in there. Was it all sound like, or was there any like stretching or breathing that uh, took place before, or was it just all sound? It was just all sound, but pretty much everyone in the room awesome. was already doing their stretching and getting themselves limbered right. up before we started. It was like, you know, crew of experienced yoga people. <laughs> <laughs> but in that, I definitely felt like, I don't know, rejuvenated after it was over. But when I was on my way there, I had to drive like two hours to go to this. I All I could really even do was drive. Like I, my productivity was completely shot. I just didn't feel like doing anything. I wasn't depressed per se. I just didn't have energy. It was just kind of sapped out of me. There was sort of, I don't know how else to describe it. You know what it's like to lose a loved one, I'm yeah. sure. And after the sound healing was over. Very heavy. Heavy, yeah. And after it was over, I... The, like that night I felt great. I felt inspired again. Everything was flowing really well internally. But uh, whenever I got home and the next day, I was like back to normal. I was like, I hadn't even slowed down at all. Not that I was bypassing the grief, but that I was just okay. I was like, it was literally healing. And I, yeah. I, I'm glad that you're bringing this to the festival just so people can get exposed to it as a concept and then explore it even further outside of the festival. It, it's it's an honor, truly. I mean, I I just recently, you know, discovered that um, this was on my path, you know, to to help heal and to help people bring things together within themselves. And um, it's great that I already have an opportunity like this to to do this. And um, I'm very grateful for it. And I know a lot of magic is going to take place. And I, I'm super excited. Yes, we, we all need this. I we can all benefit from it. The prophet and mystic Edgar Casey has a great quote, which is that sound and light will be the medicine of the future, which I think is right on the money. It's the cheapest yep. and easiest and safest form of medication you can take. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I couldn't agree more. So before we uh, run ourselves 
too long here. Let's shift gears and talk about your performance art and what you'll be doing. At, you're also part of a, a performance troupe that's going to be performing at Backwoods. Am I correct? Um, I personally haven't heard anything. I think okay. the only troupe that was actually talked about was um, between uh, me and Brady. We kind of like we're talking about something, but I, as far as anything being set in stone for me performing at this festival, it hasn't been brought to my attention. Let's see what um, happens. I bet it. I bet yeah. something will happen. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, and that's great. <laughs> Uh, yeah, when, when I saw that uh, on on the image that you shared of me, I was like, I'm like performance flow arts. I'm like, wait a second. I went and checked my email. I didn't didn't see anything <laughs> of any advertisement. Card. I'm like, well, maybe something's ahead of me that I have no idea. About. Maybe I'm we like, just like manifested something. Well, <laughs> well, let's talk about. You do have a page, High Rule Performance Arts. Like, what's the inspiration there other than Legend of Zelda? Let's talk about that. <laughs> I mean, uh, just when, when I hear the word Hyrule, it, it hits me right in the heart, man. <laughs> That's, I don't know. That was just the first word that came to my mind when I'm like, how can I describe myself as a performer in my own authentic way? And I'm like, Zelda is my life. So <laughs> yeah, Hyrule. Um, I, I picked that. That was an instinctive uh, decision uh, for me. So I followed it. Um, but yeah, I started hula hooping. Whenever I went to Mystic Sanctuary, I saw everybody, you know, in the crowd doing all their flow arts. This was the first time I've ever seen anyone um, dance with an object, like, so uh, expressing, like, just so expressive and, like, loving towards an object. I was like, what is this? What is happening? You know, what's the exchange here? Like, I want to feel it. So I got my first hula hoop from Walmart. <laughs> filled with like water and uh I remember watching some like the YouTube videos and all like the basic movements that you can do with your hoop um one of them was the isolations you know going uh right here keeping it in the same space and I was like why is this so hard and I was like getting sad I was like wait don't get sad I'm like there's water in this they probably don't have water in the hoops <laughs> so I, I drained the water and then I started to figure it out I was like, all right, it's I a conspiracy obviously don't from have... Walmart. They're trying to keep kids yeah. from becoming flow artists and being creative. <laughs> they're they're totally weighing down the hoops on purpose. Dang it, Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I obviously don't have maybe the right hoop. So then I discovered, you know, the the most uh, standard like hoop material, uh, Poly Pro. And I was like, all right. So I ordered one of those and it just expanded from there. Um, every festival I went to, I brought it with me because I knew that growth was going to happen for me connecting with all the other flow artists um, within the festival community. And I just uh, kept going. And there was definitely times of frustration, you know, like old thought patterns and stuff like insecurities, like, you know, why are you doing this? Like, there's so many people better than you. And you like have to let that go and be happy for other people and their success in order to like really flourish and what you're focusing on for yourself. And once once I let that go, then that's when all of these opportunities started to happen for me uh, as far as performance wise. I ended up connecting with this very tiny underground group here in Shreveport called the Shreveport Hoop Group. And we would perform at all like the little local festivals here that we have in our uh, city. And then I was like, I really want to perform at festivals. And to me at the time that that felt so far away. Like I was like, the skill level wasn't there. You know, I had all these doubts, but then, um, yeah, I, I saw Brady at uh, last backwards and I took a video uh, of his set and then I like shared it on my Instagram and then he started following me. And then I recorded a little flow session of myself hooping to his music. And then he messaged me and said, Hey, He's like, I really like your style. He's like, do you want to like come perform at my show for Quantum Flux Festival? And I'm like, dude, yeah. I was like, I've never performed at any festival. I'm like, this is amazing. This is perfect. So um, I totally took that and went to it. And it was wonderful. I, I met Amanda Morgan there. We got really close. Oh, I love Amanda. <laughs> She's my favorite. 
Um, and yeah, I got to meet uh, a bunch of other people just from the Arkansas and like Missouri Lake community. And that made me really happy because everything else just started expanding from there. Um, so that gave me so much confidence. Um, the Ohio Festival residents last year, um, they, they had a, a, like a hoop, like a tryout thing on Instagram. And I was like, you know, there's probably going to be like 500 people, you know, participating in this. I'm going to do it too. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm just going to do it for fun. Let's see what happens. And I got in the, in the top five and I got to perform at Resonance. And one of my favorite artists, uh, Random Rav, I got to perform on Ooh. stage with him. I was like, is this real? I'm like, what in the world? Like, it just, I don't know, like when your heart's really there and you let go of the doubt and just keep going, like, it will happen. It will happen for you in, in some way or another, it will happen. And I, I'm excited to see where it goes after this. I would love to make it, you know, one of the full-time things that I do, um, you know, teach yoga, sound healing, Pooping. I would love that to just be completely me. Um, right now, I like to wait tables and stuff on the weekends, which is fun. That's where I make a little bit of my extra money. But eventually, I'd like to let that go because that's not so healthy for the body to be walking around that much and carrying heavy trays and being around a lot of hungry, angry people. <laughs> and also, you're not sure what you're like, I don't know, depending on where you work, what are you feeding the people? You know, stuff like that. Things that I don't eat. Exactly. But... <laughs> But, you know, I, I don't look at them and be like, you're ridiculous for eating that because, you know, every, everyone's on their own journey. I, I do hurt for them. I do hurt for the animal, but I always try to create that healthy space between me and judging another person because I don't know them. I don't know what they're experiencing, like internally, you know, traumas from the past. I'm like, they're just doing what they know. And I could be as of best influence as I can through my actions, you know, not my words. So love goes way farther than judgment. Oh my gosh. <laughs> totally. Completely. completely. Yeah. I, I'm with you. I'm realizing more and more that we don't, we can't fix anybody and trying to fix somebody is what puts up the wall towards them healing honestly, to just like, how can you be of service to another person? It's not exactly the same as servicing them, like fixing them like they're a car, but no. like serve them to their, serve their highest self, serve their highest bliss. If, if their highest bliss is that they're ordering a cheeseburger and you're going to deliver that to them because you're in that role, then smile while you do it and just go with yeah. it. I'm happy that they're happy. And, um, I don't know. It's, it's been a good learning experience too. While I, cause when I found yoga, I slowly started to, you know, transition into a more vegan lifestyle. And, you know, through that, um, at first I was, I don't know, uh, very passionate about it to where it was kind of getting a little toxic in the way that I viewed other people. And I was like, wait a second. I'm like, I need to step back. My teacher calls it looking at everything as the whole you know, not fixated on one thing where you can find all these problems. I'm like, all right, let me take a step back out of what I know and try to understand what they know because I used to be there. I'm like, they, they're not trying to, you know, cause direct harm to me or anybody else. They're just living their life. And I'm like, I need to accept that. And once I did that, I found my journey to be easier and full of more love and compassion. Yeah. Most of the people that are in the meat eating, I mean, to, Unfortunately, it is a cult, but most people don't know that they're in a cult who are in cults. That's kind of how they work. But you can't just go around being like, you're in a cult. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it, I used to think I needed it too for like 26 years. So it's it's a lot easier to just lead, lead by example. The happiness and health that you exude is what's going to make people go, man, what is she doing? And that's going to be a better influence than you trying to tell someone they're wrong. So I love your right. message with that. And also, I got to just say, I was getting so excited when you're talking about your your flow art performance journey. And man, I can't wait. I really can't wait to do some flowing with you at Flintwick yeah. on this backwoods because, wow. It's going to happen. <laughs> I, it's hard for me to say like favorites, but if you put me on the spot, my favorite set was probably Flintwick at last year's backwoods. That was just crazy. It was just so crazy.
same. My boyfriend and I talk about it till this day. We're like, we saw Jade Cicada came on before him, right? I missed that because I basically sprinted from, let's see, who was it that was on main stage at that time? Uh, Emancipator. Yeah. So I had to Uh. sprint from Emancipator to catch Brady and then sprint back from Brady's Flintwick set to go catch the Floozies. But I only missed like one song on the Floozies. And I don't smoke tobacco anymore, so if I have to do any runs like that this year, it'll be a lot easier. It'll be fine. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. There's so much to be grateful for. But we've. uh, I was going to let you go at 30 minutes, but I actually still want to talk to you about more things. It depends on where you're at. If you can go a little longer. (laughs) Okay. Um, Because first of all, we haven't sampled your your singing bowls. That's probably what I'd like to do. Is and sample gong. Some, and gong yeah let's let's sample some of that stuff and you can talk about talk about it as you go and i'll enjoy it through my headphones yeah i i would love to dive in a little into a little bit of like the science uh behind it what's actually like occurring um, when playing the bowls okay first i'm gonna play my little factory made bowl um this one is uh the intention behind the note this one is the B note. So this is for the crown chakra. You know, that is the intention when playing this bowl. So I'm going to give it a little tap and then a little rub. Do you hear that well? Yes. Okay. Sounds pretty amazing for being factory made. <laughs> yeah, I love my little one as well. I think I got it at Earthbound, uh, the store Earthbound. Nice. All right, now I'm going to show you my bowls from Nepal. Um, so the bigger the bowl, um, the uh, the lower the octave. So you're, the bigger the bowl you have, the more of the low tones um, is what you're going to get which I love too, just as much as the high tones. And I got my little small one here. This one's gonna be a little bit more of like a higher higher tone from it being smaller. And that goes with crystal bowls as well. So I got um, two different mallets here. Um, This one uh, I like to use more for striking. Yep, you got your your mallet right there. We got matching mallets. Yeah, we do. I got the other one too. (laughs) That's cool. (laughs) Yeah, it's awesome. Um, Yeah, I definitely like to use this more for uh, tapping than I do the actual rim play, but it's, it's still fun to use this one, but I'm pretty sure you really enjoy this one right oh yeah i'll play my big one that i've got over here this is the i only have two bowls but let's let's try mine out Uh, you showed me yours i'll show you mine so nice i love the low tone ones for sure i mean i love them all i love the whole thing 
but but the the deeper ones are definitely um a, it's just such like a more deeper like penetration um into the body um you can it's, definitely the, it's closer to the more. root chakra the yeah. tone is and that is like the body in a way right yeah so you definitely do you know that's where you do feel yourself like as a whole through the lower tones you want to see some gong <laughs> yeah let's hit wanna you want to hit the gong? gong it sounds like hitting the bong yeah. but... <laughs> want to hit this gong man you can get high off sound though i mean i just did it a couple of weeks ago trust me you'll be able to hear it yeah you got all the equipment One day I want to own as many gongs as I can. <laughs> so you can surround somebody 360 degrees with sound. I feel like the call software doesn't completely know what to do with those sounds because it's probably trying to cut out non-vocal -vo sounds. I don't know, but it sounded pretty cool, but also a little like some of it was muting itself. But people get the picture. You've got a giant bong. I mean, gong. <laughs> <laughs> Freudian slip. You might have an, a, a bong totally. too, but we won't talk about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you got to come to my sound healing sessions in the morning so you can really hear what's going on i'm definitely going to be there yeah well abigail this has been a blast i want to give you the chance to present any closing thoughts i know that you were interested in talking a bit about the science behind it but if you want to explain some of what's going on in our bodies when we're doing this sound healing i'd love that and then we can kind of work our way towards wrapping it up Okay, great. I could literally talk forever. This is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Well, we, okay. we can do a, a more full fledged, like full length episode sometime. I'm sure we'll have the opportunity for sure. I mean, this was supposed to be live, so we could have had potentially people interrupting our talking with us needing to answer their questions. It's almost like better that it worked out this way because we had yeah. so much to express already divine alignment my friend everything happens the way it, it should <laughs> i know that was what was so great is before we were starting and we were having the technical difficulties both of us were just like smiling and like chill about it <laughs> i like that no stress no like, not necessary like oh well <laughs> um yeah so um i'll just give like a a, a little bit um of insight on uh, the, the nervous system and what happens here and how it interacts with the brain. Um, so, you know, we're not just uh, hearing through our ears, you know, we're, we're hearing from head to toe. Our, our whole body has the, I mean, is a vibration. It's, it's at its own frequency. So it has the ability to completely absorb other vibrations that are being presented. And um, with, with all of these uh, uh, sound healing tools, um, what happens here is that it soothes the nervous system and it activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest um, state. Um, when, when we're feeling very anxious and like fighty and flighty, that's our sympathetic nervous system. So it's all about bringing the two back together and leveling them. And then this is where the body reaches a state of total relaxation and tension in both mind and body. So then uh, a natural healing process takes place within the body, um, deep rejuvenation. Um, uh, some of the benefits uh, with sound healing can help uh, lower blood pressure, help uh, lower cholesterol levels, um, can alleviate anxiety, depression, PTSD, you name it. Like sound healing has all these wide reaching benefits just from bringing the body into a calm state. 
when when we are able to reach a point of deep relaxation that then that's when the body feels more alive um i i would like to personally feel um you're definitely um more more in tune with what's happening with with what's happening like my teacher likes to say it from the uh you know from the neck down you know then then you're getting that full body experience and then that's where a lot of healing can take place and then there's then there's knowledge, you know, coming from that healing that reaches the brain and it's great. <laughs> so that's just a little bit of the science behind it. And it's all about your intention and how you want to receive the vibration that you're feeling. Cause everyone has a completely different and authentic experience with each vibration. So really you are the creator of your healing and what you feel during sound healing sessions. Just like you're the creator of your entire experience, outside of sound healing <laughs> yep. you're the master of your own inner verse actually yeah. in my inner verse when i did that last sound healing bath two hour session i was talking about earlier i got all this purple light flooding my consciousness even though my eyes were closed and it was a dim room it was just like bright purple <laughs> as if someone oh, had wow. a purple light in front of me it was cool and i was <laughs> working with crown chakra stuff just generally that in that time of my life as well so it's it's definitely your intentions can set the tone for how your body receives yeah. the tones, no doubt. Very cool. Completely. Yeah. Thank you for allowing me to share a little bit of what I'm offering this year at Backwoods. I really do hope to see, you know, as many people as possible, but, you know, no expectation. Come if it feels natural. You're not obligated to be anywhere. Um, but, you know, I, I would love to offer my services and um, I think we would all um, really enjoy this. I'm excited to collaborate with Savannah. You know, this is my first time actually bringing my whole set to present to a group of people um, for us to take that healing journey. And for me to be collaborating with somebody on top of that is just magnificent. And that just makes the whole of the experience more healing because, you know, the the, the more the more the better, you know, in a sense. And I'm super excited. I've never met her before, but we've already like been connecting very nicely. Thanks so. to Aubrey for networking all of us together. She's a powerhouse for sure. She's amazing. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> uh, can't, can't wait to meet everybody uh, uh, outside of the virtual world. <laughs> well, so to be clear, you actually do recommend that people go to backwoods and you think they'll have a good time, right? <laughs> you will have more than a good time. There is just so much to be experienced uh, through any music festival. I mean, looking back at thousands of years, you know, dancing has been recognized as like a form of like healing, releasing and like worship. That's never made sense to me until I started going to music festivals, you know, so you're, you're definitely going to have an opportunity opportunity to let go of a lot of things outside um, of, of those areas uh, within the music festival. You're definitely going to get way more in tune with yourself and you're going to feel freedom, a lot of freedom and a lot of acceptance. I look at it like it's a little mini fractal of a life incarnation. When you go on yeah. this music festival journey, that's, I mean, without getting super verbose about it, it's like that deep. When you come back, you will yeah. be reviewing the experience as if you just lived a life and died and you're reliving your life to see what you learned. Like it's that, yeah. if you are open to that. I mean, and I wasn't even right. going for that reason on my first festival. And then before I knew it, I was a whole different person. It happened. And I always come back different in a better way whenever I connect with tribe, because that's what, <laughs> that's what it's all about is our connection. That's where our power is at, not stuck yeah. behind these screens and uh, on these phones and enslaved to the thought that we need to exchange our freedom for money, AKA security. Actually, all that yeah. can be dissolved, but first you have to get into the flow of enthusiasm <laughs> and enthusiasm about what you're doing in life is what is going to attract more things to be enthusiastic about. So come get stoked yeah. on the mountain with us, guys. Love to see you there. Come get weird. Come get Let's weird. Let's get weird, folks. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being with me, Abigail. This was so fun to get to know you. And thank you so much. <laughs> I feel like we're best buds already. I know. <laughs>
<laughs> it's great. Thank you for giving me and everybody else who's contributing to the festival a uh, space to talk, the yep. freedom to talk. This is always my dream to get into a big festival because of my creation. And I've been to a few festivals with my podcast before, but this is the first one that's a big one. So like, uh, this is a huge dream come true for me to even have the opportunity to be part of promoting this festival and to be able to bring my art there to hopefully get it onto the hands of some of our tribe and onto their walls. And then more importantly, though, to connect everyone to the show so that they can hear voices like yourself that are going to expand their mind about what's possible for their life. And you're definitely doing the great work and it's very appreciated. So <laughs> thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And remember to follow Abigail's Hyrule Performance Arts. And do you have anything else you want them to follow, Abigail? Um, I'm uh, currently um, preparing myself to make a yoga page uh, that uh, has a list of my classes, time states, and uh, sound healing sessions that I will be having locally very soon. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, follow my performance arts page. Uh, it would be uh, it would be very awesome if you did that, and then we can all uh, just expand from there together. All right. So, uh, Hyrule Performance Arts on Facebook. What about Instagram? Instagram. It is Hooper of Hyrule, as it is uh, all all lowercase. Uh, no no underscore. No numbers. Nothing. Just Hooper of Hyrule. Very awesome and. Listeners also remember that if you like what we're doing here, there's like a full length, big old weekly show that I do on Interverse. You can find it at interversepodcast.com. You can subscribe on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, you name it. If there's podcasts there, you can find Interverse there. So I'd love it if you subscribed and checked out some of the like 130 plus episodes that are out there with creators that are equally epic as Abigail. So thanks everyone for being with us and we'll catch you all later. Much love. Bye. Thank you.